before we get started on the next video, I decided to bring up two things. First of all, I, as for my last video, people were complaining that uh, you could hear all my S's and my breathing um, when I was recording. So, so people asked me requested that I get a replacement uh, windscreen for my microphone or I get a whole new microphone. Since I'm too cheap to buy a new microphone, um, I went and th thought I could try and buy a replacement windscreen for it. Unfortunately, stores around here don't sell them for microphones. So my only option was to buy a whole new microphone. I'm like, screw that. I'm going to go ahead and go crazy and make my own windscreen. Here you go. This is it. What the fuck? This is my replacement windscreen. Okay. I did my best to fix this so you don't hear my breathing and all my S's. And it won't hurt your ears. However, I already started rec recording some footage and I failed. You can still hear it all. I don't know how my breathing gets through all this foam, but somehow it does. So I tried. You're gonna have to live with it for this video too. I'm sorry. And try to buy an actual professional microphone and not this crappy headset that cost me 15 bucks at Walmart. Oh, but wait, there's one more thing I must point out. These cotton swabs right here and these cotton swabs. Notice the comment, gentle and safe. Really, is that really necessary to mention? Cotton swabs. What else would they be, right? Like, is there different versions of these cotton swabs? As opposed to gentle and safe, is there like rugged and dang, like toxic? Why, why do they need to put gentle and safe? Is that really necessary to put? I don't understand. Like, could you picture this happening when you're using cotton swabs? <laughs> that was kind of funny. I want to watch the video now. Yeah, what do you think of that? Today is going to be a very special episode of Classic Games on the Face of the Earth. Even though it's only the third episode, um, I'm going to do a top 10 list of all my favorite games for all the retro systems I played growing up, uh, such as Atari, NES, SNES, Sega Genesis, uh, N64, PlayStation, you name it. Whatever I played growing up, I'm going to give you my top 10 games, favorite games for each system. So having said that, we're going to start with the very first system I ever owned uh, as a kid, going as far back as six years old, it's the Atari XLXE. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, the Atari XLXE came in a floppy disk drive format. So this is the setup. You had a floppy disk drive, which connected to a keyboard, which then connected to your television. So the keyboard was technically the tower, as you would have with today's PCs. Like you have a tower, everything's connected to that. Well, back then you had just the keyboard, everything connected to the keyboard, your joystick, your disk, your floppy disk drive, and then the, that goes to the television, or the keyboard goes to the television. And televisions back then weren't as straightforward as they are today. There's no audio video cables galore on the back that you could just easily plug in and it, it goes. It was all coaxial back then. So you had a funny adapter that connected from the keyboard to the TV, and you had to buy this special adapter you connected to the TV. So you had a funny adapter that the computer provided, and a funny adapter you put on the back of the TV. Um, and an adapter that connected to the TV it wasn't a, a normal buy. It wasn't like your everyday adapter that you connected to your TV. Those things were expensive, like 20 bucks. And they broke so easily because of flimsy wires at the end. If you moved it around too much, it would just start to fall apart. So my dad had to probably replace that thing like 10 to 20 times so they broke so easily. And eventually my, my dad just gave up. So so I had this computer back when I was six. It's like the only video of me you'll see playing it. Um, there's nothing else, unfortunately. But uh, the game you're seeing in the background is Crush, Crumble, and Stomp. And I even have that game now, emulated, unfortunately. Um, to play this legit nowadays would be it's pretty difficult. I mean, I tried maybe a few years ago I went on eBay and bought the same floppy disk drive. And at that time, I still had all my floppy disks, the original games from when I was six. And I hadn't had a chance to try it since then, so I figured, well, they've been in storage, so maybe they'll still work. And they didn't. I bought the floppy disk drive. It came with a disk to prove it worked, and it did. But all my disks didn't, so it was useless. I just threw, I think I threw it out. I don't know what happened to it. I probably shouldn't have since it, the disk drive worked. But I don't know where it is now. Now, I'm not going to pick your typical favorites that everyone else would pick, like Missile Command and Joust and Tapper and Zaxxon and all these other classic games, because they're too predictable. Everyone picks those. And to 
be honest, they weren't my favorites anyway. They were fun. But there's another series of games that I used to play a lot, um, and you're going to see them now. So I'm going to try and do these in order from like starting at number 10 going down to number 1. Um, Atari it's not so hard. So the first game I chose on my list is more of a multiplayer based game. I think it was up to like 6 players if I remember correctly. Because my brother and all his friends used to get together quite a bit and we played this back when we were kids and it was fun. It's called TGIF. Thank God it's Friday, or thank goodness, because you can't say God anymore. So thank goodness it's Friday is what it's called. And uh, it, it's primarily a, almost like a text-based game, as you can see. So the objective of this game is pretty simple. You set a dollar amount at the start of the game, whether it be like $200,000 or 20000 I think it is. I set a goal, and whoever gets to that goal first wins. Now, in order to do that, you have to go through all the days of the week and... So Monday through Sunday, and it's an investment day. Now I should say each day is randomly generated, so when you come to the day screen where it shows an arrow pointing around randomly like that, you don't get to pick what day you want. You just gotta press the fire button and automatically pick the day for you, so it's always randomized. Um, of course, because if you get to pick your day, it'd be way too easy, right? And in each day you land on, a different thing will happen. Uh, for example, if you land on Sunday, um, it'd be a, a skip a turn. Nothing happens. You just, you don't lose anything. You don't gain anything. You just miss your turn, which kind of sucks. Monday, it's an expense day. You pay your taxes or you pay your bills, so you lose money guaranteed. Uh, on Tuesday, it's a lottery ticket day. So if you land, everyone would land on Tuesday all the time, it'd always be lottery ticket day, and you buy lottery tickets at the beginning of each round. Uh, if you don't get the lottery ticket day, you, you can't buy any more lottery tickets until you land on that day. And it's no guarantee you win. Most of the time you'll lose, but sometimes you win. So it's like the lottery, yay. On Wednesday, it's a windfall thing, which I'm not sure really what that means, but it's guaranteed you'll get something good. You get a large sum of money or a small sum of money, you get something good. On Thursday, it's a random event. It'll pick any one of the days, pretty much. It could be expense, it could be payday, it could be investment. It's a completely random day. Friday's is payday. So every Friday you land on, you get uh, you get pay your payday or your large sum of money. Um, on Saturday, it's a treasure hunt day. So you just get a little character who runs around digging everywhere, and each time you dig, it'll give you a better indication of where the treasure actually is. But you can only dig so many times before it says, sorry, you lose. And not only do you not get a treasure, you lose money at the same time for some reason. I don't know why. So um, And then there's the investment day. Now, what the investment day does, it gives you random object, car, boat, forest, and you can buy it for a large sum of money. And the next time you land the investment day, it'll then say, do you want to sell this investment for more money than you bought it for? Guaranteed. However, if you say no, you can keep hanging on to it, so each time you land on it, you get more and more money. But the problem is, if you hold on to it too long, you might not ever get any money, and you'll just wasted your time, like someone else might get to your goal before you then. Or th there might be a chance you never land on investment day again, so do you want a chance holding it for too long or not? It's up to you, so it's kind of a gamble. And that's that's it. That's all there is to the game. Just uh, each day you land on something different. Most days give you money, and whoever gets to the primary goal first, whoever gets the most money, like $20,000 first, wins. It's very simplistic, but remember this is back in the 80s. And for like a six-player game, when all your friends get together, it's it's kind of fun. It's even now it's kind of fun. You get bored of it after one round. And it takes a while, but it was a fun game back in the day, and it's definitely one of my favorites. Now this next game, you've seen me review somewhere before, I think it was just a quick intro to another video called New York City The Big Apple, or NYC The Big Apple. And this game, I remember playing a lot as a kid too, but it's funny because some of these games I play now, and I'm like, why do they ever like this as a kid? I don't get it. This is one of those games, but I remember vividly playing this a lot. Now, 
the objective of this game, I'm really not sure. Um, I, I, even when I was a kid, I, I didn't, I wasn't really sure. I, I never had a better grasp on the game back then, but now I don't know. I guess I could have looked it up or looked at a review or a tutorial or walkthrough somewhere, but I couldn't be bothered. So the game starts off, you start in the car and you drive into New York City. And right away you'll notice that uh, all you hear is car horns and people honking everywhere. And frequently throughout driving, throughout the day, there's massive amounts of car accidents and uh, reckless drivers on the road who purposely go to the way to smash you up. I'm not sure if this was the designer's joke to f how he portrayed New York City, but um, to me it's like saying this is Toronto, because I'm closer to, that's the biggest city closest to me right now, I guess, next to Niagara Falls. And that's what Toronto feels like to me, this massive car accidents everywhere and people riding up your butt and trying to wipe you off the road. Gee, Toronto's not bad like that at all. I'm just a jerk. So, But you start off in a car driving around New York City and right away if you hold the fire button down you'll notice it'll tell you what to do first. Like go to the mart or go to go to the automat where apparently you buy a lunch. But playing it now this is where I got stuck. I first went to the mart as you'll see here and it looks like a big mess. There's a bunch of random guys walking around in like a maze you have to go through. And you had to pick up these pretzel pieces and put them in each corner. Uh, I started to do the first corner, but then it said randomly, it's lunchtime. So I'm like, do I stop what I'm doing and go for lunch? I, that's what I did. So I went to the automat, and there was this dude freaking out in the middle. And he had to go to the top and buy burgers, which walk around. And you had to compete with the guy and try and get to the burgers before he does. Mm -hmm. But I went on endlessly, multiple games, eating the burgers and... I could never progress. Like, lunchtime would never end, and the automat thing would never go away. So I'm like, okay, what else is there to do? Well, if you look at the top, you'll see site. And there's a different little uh, initials there, like UN or WT or something. Well, each time that site comes up, whatever site it shows there, say WT, you go to the WT building, because all these, there's all these buildings there with those initials, and there's a different puzzle in each one. Now, I'm guessing if you do them all in order, or do them all as it says to, you beat the game, but I never played that long to find out. I remember as a kid, I, pr I think I did beat it at least once, but I honestly can't forget, and I played for like an hour and a half this night, I took the footage, and I couldn't get anywhere. Could never beat the automat, and I could never find all the buildings before I got either super car collision or that red car that purposely kept running me over and each time you go to the hospital you lose a ton of money and each time you lose your car like if you get hit by another car it gets towed and you have to pay an impound fee and it's crazy it's way too hard i figured so but it still it was kind of fun to give a try and i was a kid i played it non-stop so if you ever pick up an emulator and find this rom give it a try and let me know what you think i, I still consider it a classic even today Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I'm Cashman! Oh yeah! The next game I'm going to look at was a typical shooter game, kind of like an early Gra Gradius type of game, I guess. It's called Aquatron. Now, I guess they called it Aquatron because not only can you fly in the air, you can fly underwater. Yippee. But there's nothing underwater except weird-looking submarines that you come across. Anyway, the objective of this game, I think, is just to get points. There's no real ending. There's no real story, nothing. It's just one of those shooter games. You just try to stay alive as long as you can, get to the highest level possible, and get a top score. So, um, I just remember playing this game to death. And there's not much to it except in each stage. You'll see there's a little map on the bottom first of all, where those pinks, pink or purple, colorblind, uh, rectangles will tell you where the enemies are. And if they're too far away, you can always go to the topmost part of the screen and go into like a hyperdrive 
super speed, which is kind of neat. Otherwise, you can fly normally. It takes a while. And each time you get to the enemies, you just got to kill them all on the screen. And easier said than done, because as the levels progress, there's a, there could be anything from tons of fighters that purposely collide into you, or super mines that don't blow up, and before you get a chance to even think, it just runs into you and destroys you in one hit. It's like, I don't even know how that's fair. So in each time you kill one of these enemies, they'll drop like a little colorful square with a parachute on it. And if that gets to the water, it turns into a submarine. So you have to kill it. And it's better to catch... if you can actually capture those parachuted square things before they get to the water, which is a bonus point. Plus you have to risk getting yourself hurt by killing a submarine underwater, so... And that's it, really. Um, the enemies range from bombers to helicopters to suicide fighters to submarines to mines to... I think that's about it, really. Um, yeah, that's it. There's not much to this game. I just rem remember playing it a lot, trying to get to the highest level possible, which I think was 10 for me as a kid. Now I think it's like level 6, but... <laughs> still, it was one of those games when you have a totally different mindset when you're a 6-year-old playing what at the time were considered the, the latest in technology of games. So, it was it was a classic for me back then, and if you have an emulator, I suggest picking it up to try now. Here's another game I re remember vividly. I also remember being a lot better at it back when I was a kid as I am now, but it's called Montezuma's Revenge. And Montezuma's Revenge actually means something, but back when I was a kid I didn't really care. I just thought it was... You're, I thought you were a big fat lady with a sombrero that ran through a weird dungeon. And actually you're supposed to be a guy, but I thought you were a big fat woman. That's what I thought it when I was a kid. So anyways, you're a big fat guy wearing a sombrero and you're in this weird dungeon, and it's just one of those platformer games back in the day. And it's really freaking hard. I remember when I was a kid, I beat this game. And just to prove I wasn't making that up, I, to myself, I mean, prove it to myself, I went and looked up uh, speedruns online, and like, when I saw the ending of the game, I'm like, oh yeah, I did beat this when I was a kid, I remember this part. But I played this game for over an, an hour, which isn't much, but... And I could barely get anywhere. The furthest I got was this, to this pitch black dungeon area, and I just eventually got killed by a skull or fell in the lava, and that was it. But it was a fun platformer game back in the day, and it's funny because back then, for the Atari, you only had a, a paddle. It was like a, a joystick with one fire button on it, and it was the joystick was broken half the time, like it had to keep replacing that too, so the controls would stick or they wouldn't work, and I'm like, with a, when I was six and a crappy controller, I beat this game? How to lose all the all my talent? How to lose all my skill? You think it'd be better at this age, but not so much. Um, another thing that I find hilarious about this game is the way you die. You just shrivel up into this compressed ball with your legs sticking out. Um, <laughs> can't help but laugh every time I see that. I guess I should say how you kill the enemies is you have to grab a dagger, and each time you touch an enemy, when you have a dagger, it dies instantly. And, but you lose the dagger. That's the only way you can kill them. You can't jump on them like Super Mario Brothers or dare touch them because you'll die. As you can see, I died every freaking five seconds playing this game. Oh god, it was hard. So so that's it. Big fat sombrero guy running around in the dungeon. Montezuma's Revenge. Hold on a second. There's a leopard feeding on an impala out on my deck. Nope. Just Chuck Testa with another realistic mount. <laughs>